All right, here we are back in Cinema 4D. So now we want to uh, set up some geometry on the ground, uh, use Projection Man to project a texture on it, and then bake it so we can use uh, the Explode plugin on it. Uh, but before we do that, um, just want to show something that I get. Uh, I see a lot of questions in different forums about how to uh, get shadows onto video footage, and it also works for still images. So let's go ahead and show that method really fast. So I'm going to bring a cube in here and I'm going to put this on the ground plane here. So make that fairly thin. And let's zoom in a bit here. Put that right at about the ground level, the top of the cube. Okay. And let's move it over. Scale it. Okay, and also we're going to scale it on Z, move it over some, see what that looks like there. All right. Can move it back. that's going to work just fine for us. I'm going to make this on the Z1090. Uh, the Y, I'm just going to make it 6.5. And the X will make it 1620. Okay, and that looks good. As you can see, that is just a cube sitting there, nothing too fancy yet. Uh, but now, let's go ahead and add another cube. I'm just going to make this pretty small. And let's move it over here. Put it up a little bit. Uh, let's make it slightly bigger. Okay. And let's bring in a spotlight. Point it at the cube, rotate it down some, closer, a little higher up. Okay, yeah, right at about there. And let's go ahead and enable shadow maps. We'll do soft. And uh, go ahead and make the density of the shadows, I don't know, around 45, we'll say. And let's just bring in one more light. Well, will just bring a Omni light in for now to illuminate the facing side of the cube toward the camera. And if you push render now, obviously you get what you'd expect. The spotlight is casting a shadow on the ground plane. And from here, let's go ahead and duplicate our footage. Uh, I'm just gonna rename this one to background. I'm gonna rename this one uh, just to test. And let's go to the luminance. Let's copy the footage from Luminance, paste it into the color, make sure the animation data came over, and it did. Drop that onto the ground plane. Go ahead and call that ground. Okay, and then from here, uh, let's go ahead and make this frontal mapping. And drop a compositing tag onto the ground and enable compositing background and now we should see the shadow actually display on the footage as I suspected it does and even if we scroll further down here it should be doing the same thing and the shadows back there as it should be so there you go um, now this works if you're not going to move this ground plane at all if it just stays in place so if you wanted to uh, animate, say, a character walking down the street. Um, that, this is going to work. You can use this compositing background technique and it'll work just fine for you. But for fracturing up the ground, um, which I'm going to be doing using the Explode plugin, uh, as soon as you move this uh, ground, uh, you'll actually see the texture will move on it because of its frontal mapping. So uh, to get around that, uh, the easy way I found is just to go ahead and uh, Instead of using uh, this frontal mapping and uh, the compositing tag with the uh, compositing background trick, 
you can just actually use Projection Man and Camera Map the ground to it, and then just bake that texture out. So, just wanted to show you that you can do this way, um, depending on what kind of effects you're doing. But for us, we're going to do something different. So, let's delete the compositing tag, delete the footage, delete this texture cube, and just delete both of our lights. And here's probably a good place to save. So I'm going to save this. Uh, I'm just going to make this 04 for me. And you can name it whatever you like. And so now I have the ground plane in place. And this is fine. I'm not going to move it at all. But we need to set up something different. So uh, before I use Projection Man, I just want to look at my render settings. And we do have it set at the 1K. That's going to be fine, 2 to 1. But let's next thing we're going to do is drop the ground onto the camera, which is our attract camera from Synthize. And as soon as you do that, it asks or brings up this dialog, and we want to load a bitmap. And from here, we want to grab our visual effects plate that I rendered out. So let's go ahead and grab that, push open, and we want to disable the alpha and the luminance. Uh, keep it as layers, even though it's not a layer or anything. We'll just keep it as a background. And push OK. OK, so that camera mapped our scene on here. OK, and uh, the one thing you do want to do is go into the uh, Projection Man texture that Projection Man made for you. Go into the luminance, and you're going to have to calculate the animation again. Otherwise, that could come back to bite us. So let's do that. All right. And now, still look good on frame 0 and if I go to 167 we still look good everything looks like the footage okay uh, next up now is we want to bake this texture out so I'm gonna convert ground to a polygon and I'm going to add the a bake texture tag which is under the cinema 40 tags menu Bake texture alright and come into luminance, click luminance on, go to optimal mapping, and click cubic. Uh, let's come into the tag, and let's go ahead and make this a tiff, just like our uh, plate, and we need to specify a plas or, uh, path for it, so we will put it in a folder I made called texture baked class. Go ahead and call this ground baked. And we'll keep it at 8 bit. And I'm actually going to have the width and height. I'm going to match what I'm working with, which is this 1K 2 to 1, uh, 1024 by 512. Super sampling, which is basically the anti aliasing. I'm going to uh, put it at 1. I'm going to hide the ground for a second. And for the background, I'm going to pick, I'm going to use the screen color, the color picker, and pick a color that's very similar to the ground. Uh, it's not essential to do, but that'll save us potentially uh, doing a very light roto work. So we'll go ahead and do that. And last thing, come to the details tab. Um, let's actually uh, unhide the ground and come to the details tab. And you could use current render data, uh, but I'm going to actually uh, I'm going to make the sequence a little bit shorter for uh, render purposes and baking this texture and everything. So let's go ahead and see it's at 353 right now. We'll just make it at 225. Okay. So let's go back to the texture tag and start time is going to be 0, end time is going to be 225 and the frame rate. Uh, you can't actually set 23.976. That'll just uh, round to 23. So we need to set it at 24. And last thing we're going to do is drop our texture tag into this texture dialog here and go back to the options and the last thing to do here is just uh, click bake and it'll bake our texture away into the uh, file path that we chose uh, now keep in mind that this may take about 20 to 30 minutes to bake depending on if you bake all the sequence or uh, if you bake the 220 frames like I have and also depending on the resolution um, so I'm going to ahead and bake this and click bake here and I will be back shortly after this is done, and we will begin to use the Explode plugin to fracture our geometry, and we'll see our uh, newly UV-mapped texture working with our ground plane. So I'll see you soon.